Hi everybody, this is Chris Wiley with Wiley Development Group and Tasty Equity. Welcome to the highlight reels from our monthly webinar series. This segment is all about securing prime retail locations and why a multi-brand strategy changed the game for us and how it can change the game for you. Hope you enjoy this session. If you do a build to suit partnership correctly, which we have several partners that are very aggressively courting us for our business and we can help you engage with them, then you should be able to get very high profile prime retail locations at the cost of what you would pay for an inline store. Uh, anybody who's seen Subways over the years, and Ray was a big part of it, uh, we found that those inline store, or sorry, the end caps perform materially better. Uh, Ray, are you still in line? Uh, yes, I am. Ray, could you comment about what you learned when uh, Kelly joined the organization and we started moving from uh, taking inline stores to moving to the end caps, what the performance difference was? Yeah, I could just tell you, you know, Kelly's been in real estate for many years and done a lot of deals with a lot of national brands. And, you know, one of the things she really, uh, you know, I'm going to say kind of pushed us in the direction of the, uh, the end caps and the freestanding buildings as opposed to what we call inline buildings, which is, in line spaces like a walmart plaza you get a bunch of uh, retail stores in a line but being on the end cap i mean we've seen sales uh increases as much as 20 or 30 percent by being on that end cap same plaza same city just being on that end cap gives you more visibility to the consumers that are driving by and uh we're not exactly sure what causes it but it does cause the, the sales to be higher in those stores the most common TI contribution is, let's say you're renting a building at $30 a foot, maybe they give you five bucks a square foot in contribution. That is money that is just given to the contractor. They pay it directly or pay it as a reimbursement. That typically might get you an air conditioning system or air conditioning upgrade, um, maybe some power in bathrooms. That is not going to materially impact your project. It is important and you want to get it. It's free money. And folks like Kelly Gray, who heads up real estate at Rapid Fire Hothead, will get that negotiated. But there's also tenant improvement allowances where the landlord is essentially loaning you the money. Um, loaning you the money could be the entire cost of finishing out that restaurant. The downside is now you essentially are paying a premium for the rent. You have to repay that over, say, your first 10-year term. There is one reason to do it, and we are considering it on certain locations, and that is because, let's say I'm converting a 6,000 square foot building and putting two restaurants in it, and that project is a million dollars. If the landlord will give me a $200,000 TI allowance and amortize it over the first 10 years of the loan, the bank, under the right circumstances, will consider that my equity in the project. And now I only need an $800,000 loan, and I only need 10% of an $800,000 loan to get my deal done. There are reasons to consider both, um, again, the TI or the tenant improvement allowance, which is an amortizing loan to the landlord, basically, uh, is an expensive way to do it, but if you are limited on capital, it may make sense for you. The key thing is that no landlord out there, and to my example of the folks that are dreamers trying to do restaurants and bars, landlords are not going to do these types of very aggressive incentives unless you have a brand and you've got the credibility of the brand and that's where what we're leveraging is what ray has built at rapid fire pizza and hothead burritos and the familiarity with the landlords they literally have standard lease agreements with the uh, top tier landlords that control probably more than 50% as much as 70% of the real estate across the country. Pete, a, a question for you or comment for you would be great. Pete is part of the franchisor. He's, he's an investor with me and a partner in Wiley Development Group, but he's been with Ray for many years, and he has lived through opening stores, right? Uh, I like to, you'd like to talk about the 100 store checklist, but the, you know, what is the, if we can get the build the suit partner to do a turnkey arrive and drive, you know, could you just describe the level of effort it takes a new franchisee to try to figure out how to open a store the first time? I mean, yeah, if you've never opened a restaurant, it's quite an eye opening experience. Uh, for both our brands, we have our 100 item checklist um, just to hit your bases. That, that's just getting the doors open. Um, anything from your power to your water to building to, you know, 
parking lot maintenance, cutting your grass, so just, just all kinds of different things that you don't ever think about having to deal with. Um, so we really try to make it simple. And that doesn't even touch marketing, which is mainly what I focus on. So then you got to worry about marketing. Yeah, and, it, yeah, and how, many, how many people are in the team at corporate that help in that getting the store open 100-item checklist? Uh, we have uh, one key person for each brand, and there's two or three people that you know, help follow up with the franchisees on both sides. Yeah, and something that I'm proud of and that I like doing with our brands is that we're still boutique, right? This is still a, uh, I wouldn't call it a family business, although Ray and I happen to be brothers and Pete's a brother as well. We've been brothers like forever. <laughs> but the we are not a big corporate scenario. Um, people who get involved in our brand, they get to know everybody in the system. You get to know the real estate development people in Kelly's team. You get to know the construction people and the architects. This is not some big arm's length deal. So we're excited that when people join the system, they become very intimate. Uh, they know everybody on a first name basis and can actually text message with them, although that's sort of the bane of our existence. Um, but again, by doing build the suit partnerships, you can get high profile retail locations for essentially the cost of inline locations. And the turnkey arrive and drive can dramatically streamline your ability to get stores up. Um, the downside to actually having buildings built for you which is an opportunity for all of us, is that it takes about a year from the time you select a, uh, a retail pad site by a Kroger's or a Meyer or a Target or something like that to get the building built and open. So in the meantime, our strategy at Wiley Development Group is to focus on those vacant prime retail big box locations that we can convert for our purpose. So we're changing the game in fast casual. We'd love to have you do it with us. We're happy to give you a private briefing. Um, after the event, you'll get a link to this, or if you're watching the recording, uh, you can share the recording with your friends. We look forward to the opportunity to speak with any of you individually. Again, check us out on the Wiley Development Group Facebook and or Wiley Development Group YouTube channel. You can watch recordings of these events, and we'll be producing the equivalent of a podcast series for folks who want to just watch sound bites of these or share pieces with their friends.